Okay, so for this question, we have the following. As a new hire for the BGB company, you have been presented with this data. So we have this table. And on this table, so we have sales. So given right there, uh, total variable costs. <clears throat> we have right here, fixed costs. <clears throat> we have right there. And then we have a capacity. Notice capacity is in dollar value. Okay, so that's the last item. Okay, so part A, is this a fixed cost, variable cost, sale price model? Well, right away I can answer no, because remember, that your variable costs and sale price is per item and nothing here is given per item we are actually given all totals so it will not be this model it will be the second model fixed cost total variable cost and sales model and that's exactly if you look above what we have been given. So fixed costs right there, total variable costs and sales. So the answer is that. Okay. So for part A, <clears throat> this is a fixed cost total variable cost sales model. Part B. So part B, it says if it is a fixed cost variable cost sales price, well, it is not. So at the end it says else. Okay, so it is part C. So this one is C. So now they say if it is a fixed cost, total variable cost and sales model. So we want to set the sale price equal to $1. And we do that because of convenience, because whenever you are given totals in money, then just always just for convenience, pick the sale price equal to $1. Okay, and then in order to find the variable cost, so for variable cost, okay, so the one thing that you have to keep in mind, because sales and total variable costs are actually proportional because they're based on how many units you sell, <clears throat> you can use always the following proportion to find out your variable cost because sale price is equal to one dollar okay so if you take your total variable cost and you divide it by your sale price so remember what the total variable cost is total variable cost is the variable cost per one item multiplied by how many units you have sold so by the volume and the sales. So let me correct this right here because it's not sale price. This is, we want the total sales. So the sales is your total revenue. Okay. So this right here, sales is the same thing as total revenue. Now total revenue, if you remember is sale price again, times how many units you've sold, but look what happens here. Because you have an X on top and an X at the bottom in terms of how many units, well, that will cancel. And all you're going to have left is variable cost equals to sale price. But remember that sale price is just $1. 
So when you do this, okay, so when you do this division right here, you're actually going to find out exactly what the variable cost is. So you have to do that ratio in between these two. Well, we know, <clears throat> okay, so from the chart, what the total variable cost is, okay? So that's 8,300, uh, sorry, um, 837,000. <clears throat> and then that's divided by all your sales and your sales was 1,350,000. So let me divide those two. So when I divide this, I'm going to get my variable cost. And that's kind of the only, I don't know if it's a trick or not. I mean, it's something that you have to be aware of in terms of the formula and the proportionality between them. And once you do that, okay, so we can get exactly that answer. So let me just take out the calculator here. Okay, and let me adjust this. Okay, so we have eight, three, seven, zero, zero, zero. Okay, divided by one, three, five, zero, 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 zero. So that is equal to zero point six two. And again, because we chose one dollar for the sale price, okay, so that means that our variable cost is going to be sixty two cents. Okay, so that answers our question with regards to part C. Now for part D, <clears throat> so for this one, we want to find the total revenue and total cost functions. So part D, so total revenue is equal to, well, we set it to $1 times X, okay, so this is your sale price, and your X is just the volume. Now we picked it to be $1 because it wasn't told to us. And then based on that, the total cost function, well, that's your fixed cost. Well, fixed costs we know, that was 420,000, that's from the chart above and then plus your total variable cost but your total variable cost okay is variable cost which was 62 cents multiplied by x and that is basically answering and finding these two functions or these two equations so total revenue and total cost now this question doesn't ask anything further but i do want to show you that now that you do have the total revenue and total cost, so remember that you can actually find, okay, so the break even point, so the break even point, by exactly the same method as we have always done. Okay, so because break even is your revenues or your sales are equal to your total costs, okay, and now this actually makes it simpler because it's 1x. Now, 1 times x is just x. So I have x on the left-hand side equals 2. My fixed costs plus my... Okay, so total variable cost. Now I'm going to solve. So I'm going to bring this thing over. So I have x minus 0.62x equals to 420,000. Now, so don't forget, so, you know, there's a one still in front there. So this is one minus 0 0.62. So that's gonna be 0 0.38. When you subtract one minus 0 0.62. Okay, so we have this. Now solving for x. Divide both sides, so by 0 
and that's going to tell me exactly the number of units and also the the dollar value because we chose sale price to be one dollar so let me do that so again let me just pop the calculator out so that you can see <clears throat> so clear okay so we have four two zero okay zero 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 divided by okay zero point three eight okay so we have now the following okay so let me okay so just that so we can see the number so we have one one zero five two six three so it's one million okay one hundred five thousand two hundred sixty three okay um point one five eight Okay, so you know we can do that but remember that we like to round the volume so I'm going to round up okay so that will be my break-even point okay so once you have your total revenue and total cost so now you you have your actual equation okay so Another point, part that I wanted to show you is when you now have found, okay, so we found our break-even point, okay, so sometimes you may be asked to find the break-even point, so break-even, okay, as a percent of capacity, so that is sometimes asked. Now, the formula for break-even as a percent of capacity means that we have to take our break-even point and we have to divide it by our capacity. Okay, and then since we want to turn it into a percent, we multiply by 100%. Okay, so for this, okay, well, we know our break-even point. Okay, so here... We just found it above, so I'm going to, okay, so write it in. We also know our capacity, so that was given in the question. So notice it's um, 1.5 million. So I'm going to just divide it. Okay, and then if you multiply by 100, you're going to get the percent. Okay, so we have 1.1 zero five two six four divided by one five one two three okay and that is equal to and then when you multiply by 100 okay so we get now we get approximately you know 73 and i'll round it to one decimal okay so we're at approximately 73.7% of capacity, okay? So that's what we have, okay? So you do get asked this particular question sometimes. Let me just complete this, and I also want to show you, okay, so how you can draw the graph. So remember that for these questions in terms of graphing them, Okay, so we always um, plot them, so we have an X and a Y coordinate in terms of plotting. Now, in this case, because you were not given your sale price and you were not given your variable cost, right? We were giving everything in terms of the model of sales and total variable costs, right? This is what we have been given. So when you're creating your chart, Okay, so the kind of easiest thing to do is, okay, so make it in terms of a percentage where 100% represents your capacity because that's the maximum that you can <clears throat> create or sell. And then, you know, you can plot out the rest. So on the y-axis, so this is going to be the dollar values 
And now, you know, so the first dollar value, I guess, you know, you can put your fixed cost. So you can write that in. Okay. So that's where it's going to, your cost is going to start. And now if you go back, so remember that your equations, so, so your equations were right here. Okay. So these are the equations that we have to plot. Okay. So now your total revenue, okay. And then your total cost. So fixed cost was 420,000. Okay. So this is 420,000. Okay. And this right there. So I'll change it into red because I guess it's a cost. So it's going to keep rising, but it's going to stop, right? Because you can't produce more than capacity. And for your, so this is your total cost function. And now for your, um, total revenue function. So total revenue is always starting at zero here. Okay. And now keep in mind. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is, so don't forget. Okay. So that we have okay, our break even point at around 73.7. .7. So you don't have to be perfectly accurate here. Okay. But 73.7 .7, so you know i mean halfway point i guess is here so this would be around 50 percent okay and then 73.7 that's .7, you know kind of maybe a little bit halfway here okay so this would be your break even point okay in terms of percent of capacity so right here okay so at this point that's where these lines should intersect Okay, at the break even point. So here I'm going to draw my total revenue function. And I'm going to do my best here so that they intersect right at that point. Okay, so that point right there is your break even point. And before that point, so, you know, all the way here, you basically were losing money. So this was still at a loss for you. But, okay, so after that point right here, now, okay, you were at a profit. Okay, so and don't forget, this is your total revenue. So in the sales total variable costs and fixed cost model, okay, so please <clears throat> ensure that you have, you know, this x-axis as a percent. Okay, and then this right here, okay, can still stay in terms of dollar values. All right, okay, so that's pretty much it. Okay, so this is your graph that you have. Thank you for watching.